good morning. It is October the 25th. And, uh, you know, summer is over. And it gets cold here in the greenhouse now. So I have a little heater to keep it warm. But, we have been able to, uh, keep our tomatoes surviving quite nicely. There are four plants. There's four tomato plants down there. And that's, this is the foliage from four tomato plants. And I don't grow these quite like, uh, greenhouse operations do, you know, their, their method is to let them grow one long stalk and then they, you know, basically lower them down and kind of coil up the stems at the bottom. I don't do that. What I do is I allow them to uh, grow and when the stalks get too high, you know, I'll clip the top and then what happens is some of the suckers out of the bottom, I will let those grow. Now usually they start growing well before the bottom, that, that top one gets too tall. But I will allow them to grow in a controlled fashion, meaning only a certain number of them. What happens is you get several suckers that grow off of some of these plants. And it's a little harder to control that way. I mean, if you were trying to do, uh, you know, uh, mechanized farming, let's say, or, or assembly line farming, it doesn't really lend itself to that. But for your own little greenhouse, in a smaller space. It looks pretty good. Now let me show you some of these. I just picked these this morning, but uh, let me show you something here. Now I mentioned a while ago that there's only four plants here. Now let's look down here at one of them now. Look at the size of that uh, tomato stem. See they're, they're pretty big. And there's another one. See that's the main plant. They're pretty large. I'd say that's a well, that's a that's pretty big around. And then there's another one over here. I don't know if you can see that coming up through there. And there's another one over there. Now that one's not huge, but as you can see, you know the the these these plants get fairly large. I mean these things. See, here's where one of them uh, uh, split off and a sucker came up. Now both of these vines. See, this one goes up here like that. And this one goes up here like that. Now both of these vines go all the way up to the top here and they terminate somewhere and I can't see where they are. But as you can see, there's one of them here. And it has grown up and over it has grown up and over and down here. And there's uh, flowering fruit here ready to go here. Give them a shake to help pollinate them. But uh, that's how I do this. Now, what I should have done is maybe clip this off and let some others grow, but I'm not so sure how much longer I can keep these growing in here because winter is coming. I'm going to try to go through the winter with it. Now, now that I've shown you this, uh, I just picked a bunch, and again, you can see that, you know, there's a lot of tomatoes here still, you know, waiting to get uh, harvested. So there's a lot of production here. So let me show you inside what I've got. Okay, now now these are some of the tomatoes that we picked off of those vines. Of course, on this one here, these are uh, there's some other ones here. We've got some cherry tomatoes here and some other uh, black creme tomatoes. A few, but the vast majority of these are off of those four vines that I showed you outside. And uh, <clears throat> these were in the refrigerator. And they're ready to be juiced and uh, turned into tomato juice or salsa, which is what we're going to do. And these I just picked. These, uh, just before I filmed that little episode there before, I, I picked these. Now, let me show you something about uh, homegrown tomatoes. <coughs> Excuse me. Homegrown tomatoes. They're delicious tomatoes, but, you know, it's difficult to sell them in the store. Let me show you. Okay, now if you go to the store, you know, you might like a tomato like that, and you might say, oh, yeah, let me pick that one. Now, this could stand to be a little more ripe than this, but you get the idea. That's a nice tomato. Now, this is a brandy wine tomato, but it's kind of unusual to look like this. Generally, you'll get something like this. Now, most people who shop in the supermarket they would look at something like this and go, ooh, that looks icky. But, you know, most uh, Brandywine tomatoes, they'll, they'll grow something like this. Yeah, I can pick any one of these up 
and you'll see there's little spots. Now this one could ripen up a little more. And now uh, there's there's a nice one. And if you're really good at at uh, gardening, you know, if you're really good at it, you can get more of these to look like that. So they'll be palatable for the supermarket. Now there's another one you can see that doesn't look too presentable. And here's another nice one that doesn't look too presentable. Let me get some of these over here that are very ripe. And you can see some of the other problems that you get with them. Now these are very ripe. We've had them in the re refrigerator for a while. But you see that looks pretty good from the back. And uh, the, from the front, see there's, they're scarring. Same thing here. They're scarring. And there's a fissure right there. And uh, see there's one there. It's, it tore open. Now if you're going to eat these at home, they're uh, still excellent. They, the flavors are just uh, phenomenal. But as you can see, this is the reason why. This is the reason why you go to the grocery store, and you find tomatoes that uh, you know, look nice, but they don't have a very good flavor. You see, tomatoes in a grocery store environment, when the shopper comes by and looks at them. You know, they'll pick one out and go, oh, let me see, oh, there's a better one. You know, you, you'll be a little selective, and you want to get the ones that look the nicest. That's just human nature. And these don't lend themselves very easily to look the nicest. So what they do is they have bred uh, types of tomatoes that ship well. In other words, you pick them in the field. And then you box them up and refrigerate them or whatever they do with tomatoes. I'm not sure they refrigerate them. But you box them up and you ship them. And then they get to the store a week later or something like that. And then what happens is uh, they put them on display. And if they don't look nice and red and wonderful, they don't sell. But you got to remember when you're in the store, you're looking at tomatoes that were... Uh, developed to be disease resistant in the field, to be easily picked so they don't bruise easily, and to be shipped easily so they don't uh, you know, get too ripe or, or bruise when they ship. And once you get to the store, they look real nice in the case. But to breed all of that stuff in there, uh, the flavor uh, suffers. And that's why these, you know, even though they look they don't look like what you'd want to get in the store. These just knock the socks off of the ones in the store as far as flavor. These are better. I, and I would argue that they probably have more vitamins and minerals and all of those things. They're probably healthier for you. But keep that in mind when you go to the store and you buy tomatoes and they look really nice. That they are bred or they are developed to be there and look nice ship there but nice. They're not developed to taste very good. But that's that's why tomatoes are bland and that's why these are so much better. Because they won't ship well and they won't present well in the store.